This is the Financially Simple Podcast, the show dedicated to destroying the complexities of money for today's small business owner. The content in the show is for informational purposes only. This show is not investment advice. Instead, seek help from a competent financial advisor or conduct your own due diligence. Justin Goodbread, CFP, is an investment advisor representative of Heritage Investors, a registered investment advisor only conducting business in states where it is properly registered or is excluded or exempted from registration requirements. Registration is not an endorsement of the firm by securities regulators and does not mean the advisor has achieved a specific level of skill or ability. Here's your host, pizza-loving, certified financial planner, Justin Goodbread. Welcome to the Financial Simple Podcast. I'm your host, Justin Goodbrand, and today we're going to begin a series on personal cash flow. In the last episode, I laid out the series on how a wealth manager views a client's life. And as you know, I work with business owners, so I view personal finances as important, if not more important, than the business finances, some cases. And today is one of those areas where personal cash flow is actually more important than your business cash flow. And at that point, you said, Justin, you've lost your minds. We're going to get to that, but perhaps you've heard the name Richard Branson. Richard Branson is the owner of Virgin Airlines and is a famous, famous business person, very wealthy. He made the statement, he said, never take your eyes off the cash flow because it is the lifeblood of business. I agree with that. The same is true in your personal finances. The amount of cash flow which passes through your personal accounts is important. It's very important. So I'm going to explain in detail what cash flow is today, and I want to give you some tips on how you can make your personal cash flow solvent and how you can prepare your personal cash flow. So let's deal with this. What is cash flow? Cash flow is the amount of money being transferred in and out of the family. The technical definition is this. It is the net amount of cash you deposit and spend during a period of time. The financially simple definition is it's the amount of money you deposit in your checking account and pay bills out of. It's the amount of money you can spend, play with, do whatever it is. The goal is to have more cash coming in than going out. More cash being deposited than expenses are being created. The need to create extra money each month is important. We need to have just a little bit of what's called surplus, but we do not need to create too much extra cash flow. And at this point, you've said, Justin, you have lost your mind. I know I've said two things thus far that you may think I'm crazy. I said, first, your family budget is more important than the budget you deal with at work. And you're saying, Justin, you've lost your mind. The second thing I said is you don't need to create too much cash flow on the personal budget. Let me explain. See, whenever you have deposits, which hit your company, extra cash, which goes into the company, you can decide if you want to spend the cash or keep it as income. You can decide at the company level, do I want to spend the cash? Do I want to go out and hire somebody else? Do I want to go out and buy a new product or a new service, a new piece of machinery? Do I want to advertise more? Or do I not want to have any of that extra cash hit? Do I just want to pass it on through to the bottom line of the company? Whenever you spend the extra cash in your business, most of the time you create a tax deduction. And that causes the extra cash not to have taxes levied against it. However, when you have extra cash that hits your home accounts, there's often not a tax deduction available. That's right. Whenever you move money into your personal cash flow, whether you're a business owner and you put more money inside your cash flow than you're spending, you have now created a taxable event. And sometimes uh, taxes could be as high as 40, 50, 60%, depending on the state and federal tax level you're at. So to properly control the cash flow at home is vital. It's more important than properly controlling the cash flow at the business level. See, we always start, whenever we're trying to control cash flow, we always start with the desired lifestyle that we want, and we build a budget around the lifestyle. Now, the budget for our personal budget has to be tax-sensitive in nature. Then we only want to deposit the amount of cash into our personal cash flow that is necessary to reach our personal planning goals or our lifestyle goals. It's not uncommon whenever I meet with a new client, I'm trying to explain to them that they're taking either too much money out of the company or not enough money out of the company. I'll write a T, 
like the Tennessee Power T here in Knoxville. I'll write the letter T in a capital letter, and I'll use this T to explain cash flow. I'm going to try to do this verbally versus in picture format so many people see me do. At the top of the capital T, I want you to put the amount of money that comes into your personal accounts. So for keep this simple for audio purposes, we're going to say that we have $100,000 and we're going to place it at the top of the account. That's how much money you, the business owner, want to have come into your personal life. And now on the left side of the T, we're going to write the word lifestyle. And this is the amount of money that fits your budget, the amount of money that you want to spend day in, day out just to live your life. So let's say, for example, on the left side of the T, we have a budget which says we need to have $80,000 to live on. I'm making up an arbitrary number. Your number is going to be obviously different than what I'm describing. But let's say for this example that we have $80,000, and that $80,000 is going to consist of our mortgage, our car payment, our student loan payment, all those different things, our taxes, you name it. We got $80,000. So now we have at the top of the T, we have $100,000, which is what we want to have come into our life. But our budget says we only need $80,000 for lifestyle, which means we have $20,000 extra. So we're going to put this on the right side of the T, and this is going to be our surplus account. This is $20,000 now that we've had come in from our business to our personal account that is potentially subject to taxes. we got to do something with this. So we can make changes to it. We can defer it if possible. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't, depending on the amount of income you make. Maybe you shouldn't have even brought it across the threshold from the business and the personal side to begin with. See, if you control your personal cash flow properly, you can actually create wealth by not paying too much in taxes. You're listening to the Financially Simple Podcast. Show your support by subscribing to this and our other educational business channels at FinanciallySimple.com. So that's why I said earlier, your family budget is much more important than your business budget because it's all tax driven. Whereas your business budget, yeah, it's important. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that don't do a business budget. I'm not saying that. If you've heard me for any length of time, you know that. But that's why I went on to say, do not create too much extra cash flow in your personal finances, especially as business owners. We want to move from the business to our personal side. The cash flow that comes into our personal side should be exactly what we're going to spend. So we don't want to have too much cash flow. So what do we do with our cash flow? It's simple. We pay off our debts if we have a little extra. So let's say that, you know, we had an extra $20,000 and that was intentional and we were going to knock out that student loan. Okay, we realize we're going to pay taxes on it, but man, we want to pay off our debts. Or maybe we want to invest in an asset outside of the business. Maybe you want to buy cryptocurrency. Maybe that's what you want to do. Maybe you want to go out and buy a piece of real estate, buy another piece of land for your future house in a couple of years. Maybe you want to stabilize your budget. Maybe instead of having your budget rock up and down, maybe you just want to stabilize it, have a little bit extra cushion in your cash accounts. Perhaps, just perhaps, you want to spend a little bit more. I know we like to do that. So that's what you do with the extra cash flow. But why does it matter? Why does cash flow even matter? Because it gives you short-term and long-term peace of mind. See, if you can put your personal life into a systematic cash flow management program, which we're going to talk about in these next coming episodes. I think we've got like 30 cash flow episodes here coming up. If you can put your personal life into a cash flow management system, then your short term peace of mind is there. You know that you're able to meet your monthly bills. One of the things I personally like to do is by the first week of the month, I go ahead and pay all my bills for the month, whatever they are, power, cable, anything I can pay. It's I want to get it done by the first week of the month. That's peace of mind. I don't have to think about it till the next month. It also affects your long-term peace of mind. As you're tracking your cash flow, seeing how much money you're making versus how much you're spending inside your personal accounts, you know where you're going to need to be in 10 years. You know what lifestyle you want to live eventually. I know how much money I'm going to need for retirement for me and Miss Emily whenever our kiddos are out of the house because I'm tracking my cash flow, which creates the potential now we know how much income we're going to need for our life. And... We also know if we have a little bit of surplus that we can create a legacy for our future generations or we can give it away. We can do things with it. So tracking your cash flow matters. 
We're going to address cash flow and how to properly plan for it in greater detail. But for now, let's wrap this episode up. Very short. We're trying to shorten these episodes up. Let's wrap it up with this concluding statement. Cash flow matters greater at home than in business. It does. The reason why I'm harping on that is because so many of us business owners do not focus on our home budget. We don't. We leave it to our spouse or we leave it totally unattended. And when we need cash, we just slide it over. Man, guys, we're missing the boat. If you don't properly plan your home cash flow, then you could be wasting money. And for nothing else, on the amount of money you're giving the government. And with that, I want to invite you to check out our newest online course. It's a course designed to help business owners get out of debt. I mentioned earlier, you know, hey, we got to pay off our debt. Maybe you're like, dude, you don't have a clue how much debt I have. If you want to get out of debt, we developed a course. It's pretty in-depth. Check it out, financialsimple.com. You'll see the icon there for the debt course. Check it out. Maybe you want to get out of debt. It's like, I think it's like 90 bucks or 100 bucks. Eh, it's not very much. Maybe you want to grab that and just see what it's going to take for you to get out of debt. You know, like I say every week, life is hard. It is. Life is good and life can be frustrating. Money doesn't have to be. Hey, we're going to continue to make our lives at least financially simple. Y'all go out and create a great day. You've been listening to the Financially Simple Podcast. For more business and personal financial help and information, head over to FinanciallySimple.com today.